Hello everyone. Welcome to Dynamics Con, the second edition of the year 2021. Uh, myself, uh, Jeevarajan Kumar. I am working as a solution architect in Avanat, Singapore. And uh, again, you know, thanks, thank you everyone for joining today and to making this event uh, and for making this event successful. So today, the topic that we're going to see is the tips and tricks in scheduling Dynamics 65 field service. So it's not just about field service. Uh, it can be used for project service or you know, overall in unified resource scheduling as well. So here you can see uh, my blog uh, URL and this is my Twitter ID and this is my LinkedIn ID. And you can follow me on the Twitter and LinkedIn uh, and please feel free to reach out to me for any questions you have around this. And uh, I'm a Microsoft uh, Business Application MVP and also a Microsoft uh, Certified Trainer. So without further ado, let's uh, quickly jump into the session. So for today's agenda, uh, we're going to see a quick introduction about the field service. So our major focus is going to be on the scheduling part of the field service. Uh, so for that, we first set the base, you know, after having some introduction about the field service, and then we see what is scheduling in field service and why we need that. And we'll explore the different tools that we have uh, uh, in the field service to, uh, for scheduling. And we'll go through some of the best practices to be set, and we'll see tips and tips and more tips, you know. Uh, it's, it's kind of a tips and also a be, uh, kind of a best practices to uh, on utilizing and on using these resources so okay quick introduction about the field service so what is field service right so field service uh, refers to any service that is performed on the field uh, which is quite simple as that so dynamics 365 field service uh, specifically provides you know the organizations with the tools and necessary you know on the on-site services for their customers and to manage their mobile workforce and it helps to dispatch uh, workers to a specific location for installation repair and maintenance and for any uh, for any service based uh, uh, for any services as well apart from these three like you know uh, like a consulting a patient or for a consulting services as well and the tools that assist in creating work orders and it provides a scheduling and dispatching technicians it also helps to uh, execute a work order and you know manage asset and you know, service and inventory and building and more so what is the value that uh, dynamics 65 field service brings so it basically decreases in average total time, travel time, uh, by scheduling the jobs to the closest available technician, and it saves time and reduces the fleet and the maintenance cost. It improves the first uh, fix rate, you know, from always having the, uh, the skills that require to succeed the job. And also it's increased the customer satisfaction because we are sending the right uh, people to do the right work at the uh, promised time. And also uh, when you take, uh, think about the preventive maintenance where, you know, uh, we are uh, proactive uh, it helps the organization to be proactive and uh, to do the services upfront and of course it increases the number of calls that's taken by the technician because of the optimized schedules and the routes and you know and the measurements so it, it also helps to reduce the truck rolls by uh, by optimizing the uh, routes so as per this study you know conducted at uh, june uh, 2019 by forrester consulting so it says that you know the return of investment that we uh, that the organization can get by implementing the Dynamics 65 field service, it's around 363%. So you can imagine now how beneficial it is for the organizations. So this is the overall process uh, flow, you know, uh, a general process flow in implementing the field service. So the first step would be the work order creation. So the work order creation, the work order is the entity that defines how and what information is required to, uh, to fulfill the particular uh, service. And you know, and this, this can be generated uh, by different medium, it can be manually created or it can be created from the case. Where it can be auto generated by using agreements. And the second one is uh, scheduling and dispatch. So this defines how the work orders that's been created is going to be scheduled uh, to the customers. Right? There are various ways to schedule, and we will see that in the shortly. And finally, and, and the next one is service delivery, which is uh, performing work on site where the field uh, technicians uh, basically can uh, conduct the work at the customer service location and they will fulfill the work order. And finally, once the work, work is done, it can be reviewed uh, by the uh, management or, or the, 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 the uh, back office team and then uh, it is sent for the billing. And it also can be adjusted to the inventory based on the products that we consume for this work order. 
So usually for the billing and the inventory management, a field service will be uh, integrated with the ERP systems to you know, uh, take it further. So for today's session, uh, we are going to focus on this part, which is scheduling and dispatching. So this defines you know, how will the dispatchers interact with the schedule board and you know, scheduling assistant, and uh, they can also use you know, automated routing or uh, you know, uh, RSO or single resource optimization like that. Right. Since uh, field service provides or URS provides uh, lots of tools, uh, it doesn't mean that we have to use every all you know, all of them. But definitely, uh, in use all of them, uh, based on your business scenario, definitely you can have that snap where you know you are making use of the uh, resources effectively. So it, it's like each uh, feature is like each uh, infinity stone, I would say. So you can have a we have a schedule board where the, uh, the schedulers uses it to manually schedule the work orders. And uh, we can also use schedule assistant, which is kind of a semi-automated feature or service, which helps uh, pre-populate or filter the resources based on the information we have in the resource requirement. You'll see those in the sh uh, shortly in the demo. And third one is RSO, uh, which is resource scheduling optimization, which is completely an automated service which is used by the organizations extensively to auto schedule uh, their workforces uh, and I mean the work orders and the tickets to the workforces. And this is the premium feature where uh, you need separate licenses for the RSO. So unfortunately today we will not be seeing any RSO demo, but have some good tips and screens uh, to explain them. And then we, uh, so the Microsoft also provides scheduling API. So which uh, basically is used internally by the schedule board and scheduling assistant as well. Uh, which we can leverage and we can write a code, you know, uh, code so we can extend it on top of that from our external systems that we have or internal systems that we have in the organization uh, to, to uh, facilitate uh, uh, staffs to do the scheduling. And there is also a new uh, field service portal, uh, self-scheduling uh, feature in the field service portal, which helps uh, customers or vendors, basically external users, to schedule the uh, to create a scheduling or booking for themselves. So we are stepping into the general best practice. Now we just saw the, uh, we said the introduction, what is field service and what are the different tools that is available in the scheduling. And now we'll see the general best practices uh, when it comes to setting up the right environment for the best scheduling as much as possible. Uh, should it's recommended to capture and load uh, data as much as possible, uh, you know, in the resource requirement. So, or, or in the field, uh, or in the work order. So, for example, we can define like, you know, what kind of items uh, are we going to schedule? Like, you know, can the resource be scheduled for multiple items in a single day, or the resources, uh, or it's going to be like, you know, uh, the resources will work only on one item per day, something like that. Right? This kind of a basic set of questions should be asked, a kind of a checklist to plan our scheduling and our setup appropriately. So, what does you know as unscheduled item look like? Either there can be multiple statuses for within the unscheduled item, or it can be like you know just one status, or we can have you know uh, is there a difference between you know a job just being scheduled or job is working on it, and how does the automatic uh, the GPS information like geofencing can be used in our uh, uh, business requirement, and what are the other factors you know can impact scheduling like location, skill set, characteristics, something like that, and with all this you know set of questions we ask upfront and uh, we we have to. Uh, populate the information like uh, you know as much as possible in the resource requirement and in the uh, work order so that it is used effectively by the tools that we just saw uh, in the scheduling and there are other things like you know priorities that can be used uh, to uh, service the high priority customers uh, or for you know like uh, emergency work orders uh, in that case you know the, the tools that like RSO will basically use uh, to prioritize those work orders uh, over the other work orders, right? And uh, we can have a different organization units based on the work we do, uh, the, the resources do, or based on the region, so that, you know, we'll have a, a segregated set of uh, schedules and, uh, and, and, you know, and the scheduling mechanism that we can uh, have in an organization. And again, you know, if you're talking about resources requirements, uh, we have, we know that the matching the resource requirements are going to be matched with the right resources. So which uh, the resources should have the valid skill sets and roles and locations as well. And we have to have a business closure dates and, you know, uh, and leaves upfront, right? 
So it's a general rule. Apart from that, uh, wherever possible, we can, uh, it's, I mean, when we talk about scheduling, it's not just only for the human. It can, uh, I mean, the resources don't need to be always to be a specific single human. It can be a facilities as well, right? So where we have a, spe- a physical space, such as a room or a location, you know, uh, as well to be scheduled. So for example, if you take a, a, a hospital a management, you know, or hospital field management scenario, where uh, an operation theater can be scheduled, uh, can be blocked, uh, where the doctors as an individual user, uh, individual um, resources, and uh, the surgeon and you know, can be individual resource, and the operation theater itself can be a resource, where collectively all this can be booked together uh, to perform that specific uh, specific surgery, right? And apart from individual resource, uh, the work order can be resource, uh, scheduled to a group of people itself, no, uh, it's called crew. So basically a crew can have a, uh, will have a crew leader and a multiple resources under it. So this is very helpful when we have a work where a specific group of people needs to perform, uh, you know, to, to do the job basically. So, in, and also and, uh, something called resource pools. Uh, the resource pools will help the schedulers to basically uh, book a resource requirement to a generic pool. So where you now without deciding which resource exactly gonna be booked, we can have a general pool of resource like, you know, maybe like someone like, you know, uh, surgeons, you know, something like that, where we do not, we don't book exactly which surgeon, but there will be a group, group of, you know, like heart surgeons, something like that. And we can just book it the pool and later when required, the appropriate resources will be chosen. So the one thing that to be uh, make note of it is the crew, the assignment of resource to the crew will is, is a time bound. So uh, if you have a pe- uh, resource assigned to a crew within specific period, and within that period, the resources cannot be assigned to any other crew or any other resource pools, okay? That is something we have to keep in mind. And when we book a re- crew, all the resources under the crew will be booked automatically. And the next one uh, is geofence. Uh, so geofence is basically, a, uh, it's a virtual perimeter around a specific location, right? So the common use cases of the geofence is, before going to geofence, of com- I mean, the common use case of geofence. So how the geofence works is, when a work order, you know, uh, geofence is crossed, by the resource geofence, right? Or the worker service location geofence is crossed by the resource geofence. Uh, the geofence event is created. So what does that mean? Let's say the customer location uh, is in a specific lo- a specific place. And when the technician uh, reaches within like, you know, like, within like say uh, uh, 20 meter or 30 meter radius of that location, automatically a, a event is created, a entry event is created saying, you know, the particular resource has been uh, entered into that location and at the same time when the resource exit out of that geofence so it also gets another event saying a particular resources has been exited out of that location so how does it helpful how does it benefits is we can think about uh, various scenarios where uh, let's say we have a, a bunch of resources and you know they they every day they go to the reporting uh, you know, respective office and they report there and you know they basically do their roll call and then they depart from there to the respective customer locations. So in this case, we can automate certain things. Like for example, if there are uh, resources, they have to go to this, uh, like as I said, the office. Automatically, we can based on the geofence of that, you know, office, the organization unit location, and the resource location, we can have the geofence event, and we can track whether actually the resources has been uh, uh, available for that day or not. Right. So based on that, we can uh, design our business rules and requirements. And we can right away uh, send a notification to the resources if they are late. We can mark them as a late, or we can you know mark them as a, 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 have apply a time off for a hour or two, something like that automatically. The same time, when the customer when the resources reaches the customer location, automatically we can trigger the event and we can change the booking status to arrived and reached, and you know we can then start the business processes accordingly. So in this way, uh, the use cases we can think about, like right? just a sample use case, but you can definitely extend this based on the uh, business requirement. And then uh, using the skills effectively. So the resources and uh, the, uh, can have skills and the resource requirements in the, no, will have skills, right? The left and right. So to match this, that's what the RSO uh, uh, will use it to match or the schedule board, scheduling assistant will use them to match, right? So typically what happens is uh, in the resource, uh, in the skill sets, uh, it, 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 it can be, uh, you know, any skill like, you know, like uh, surgery 
or you know like uh, uh, installation skills or maintenance skills something like that and it can be also any certification you know uh, can be any certain level of like for example it can be a, a mct certification or it can be you know like a role based certification that we have in microsoft and uh, it can be used extensively for other purposes as well like for example we can have uh, different skill sets called you know a skill set called uh, special clearance where that skill set is required to enter a specific premise to perform a specific installation or maintenance right so the, within this skill set it can be further you know use further we can use a further grand, we can go to further granular level uh, of uh, of permission control or or scheduler matching when we use the proficiency in combination of the skill sets right so what does that mean for each skill set we can have multiple proficiency as seen here like you know like you can have a uh, instead of the out of box that comes with familiar good and uh, you know like proficient you can keep extend this you know something like this or you can also have something like this right so you can say uh, like you know uh, you can have a within a, to enter a specific secure location like you know like let's say a server room or let's say a, a government buildings right you can have a special uh, level 1 clearance and there can be certain resources with the level 2 clearance and to perform certain work order at these locations only you know resources with that kind of proficiency can go and do that you know something like that so with that we quickly you know uh, jump to our uh, demo where we'll quickly see what are the uh, you know how the schedule board looks and all these things right so it's pretty straightforward since this whole session is not about uh, uh, it's not a basic session it's a quite advanced session and very focused on the scheduling so we're not going to see how the schedule board looks i'm just going to just see i mean uh, we, we are not going to see what are the schedule board uh, features it's available we are just only going to see uh, the, the things that we just discussed now right so if you see this is one of the crews that i have here so if i click on the crew you can see that a couple of bookings has been created against the crew so to see what are the resources under the crew you can see right if you click on the view resources as a split view you can see the resources under the crew and you can see there are two bookings that's been assigned to this crew so eventually you have you know those bookings assigned to the individual resources as well that is under the crew right to jump into uh, the resource requirement that I was talking about okay let me quickly go here yeah so uh, let me just uh, show the geo fence setting that I was talking about earlier so once you enable the geo this is how you enable the geo fence uh, right you set the unit of measures and uh, how uh, how you going to set the geo fence perimeter and what is the radius around that and you have the entities that should be configured against the geo fence like you know account entity or bookable resource entity so if you open a bookable resource entity we can see this is the entity that's going to be configured and these are the two fields that's going to be used as the you know uh, to mark the location to identify the location right by geo fence the moment the specific event happens like i just told now where a fe uh, sorry where a technician enters into the uh, customer location it automatically triggers a geo fence event right so a geo fence event would look uh, something like this as i showed in the uh, i don't have any geo fence event like this here but as i showed in the uh, powerpoint it's going to look like this right and then once you have a geo fence event uh, the respective geo fences will be marked against it okay and in the resource requirement uh, if i go back quickly to resource requirement so you can see in the resource requirement uh, this is what i was talking about right so you can have different skills and you can have a different proficiency right here you know it can be a uh, custom proficiency or it can be out of box proficiency this is pretty much out of box proficiency as you can see i'm marking like you know uh, this resource requirement requires a skills of proficient so that the resources matching resources with the right skill sets would be used so if i use a roles uh, like you know like i want a, a solution architect to perform this project or i want a, a heart surgeon to uh, a senior heart surgeon to perform the surgery so i can mark the roles accordingly to so that the the resources with the matching skill set will be uh, booked you know for this so that that's the, the scheduling is all about matching the right requirements to the uh, so you're matching the requirements to the right resources right so next one is uh, the tips on rso so next we'll see the rso and and uh, schedule board tips and then the rest of the other like you now let's self scheduling tips so the next one is rso so uh, unfortunately i cannot show the rso in the live uh, environment now as it uh, needs a special license and uh, no a separate license uh, to use that but so if you are using an rso or if you are uh, planning to use rso or if you learning uh, you know about rso uh you this is good to know these tips so the first uh, tips i uh, i would say like keep optimizing right so the primary purpose of rso is not just to create a new bookings that is you know not just to schedule uh, 
uh, unscheduled work orders to the uh, to the best uh, resources. Also, to re-optimize or optimize the already uh, scheduled work orders to you know keep optimizing to the best resources over the span of time, right? So it can be either scenario where the the work order has been created and it's been scheduled, let's say, by the scheduler in the schedule board or scheduling assistant. Uh, then we use we can use RSO to find the best resources. Definitely, the RSO will help us to find the best matching resources than the schedule board and scheduling assistant. And then uh, it can also use to, as I said, let's say today I've scheduled a field job to a specific engineer, a technician, and then let's say tomorrow the technician uh, is on leave or, or you know, some other technician is on leave and due to the, the you know, whoever is available closer on this particular booking day, let's say some other technician is, uh, can, will have, if he performs instead of the current technician, then he don't need to travel much as current technician, for example, with the minimum travel time, the RSO will definitely re-optimize that to the other technician, right? So this way we can keep running the RSO in a specific interval and keep it, you know, uh, optimized always. To how do we do that? Uh, there is a certain prerequisite to do that. So first prerequisite is to obviously uh, in this scenario, the main thing to note is you don't want already uh, booked uh, work orders where you already committed a specific time to your customer. You don't want the RSO to change the time to you no know, time and date and uh, uh, to reschedule to someone else. In that way, you it, it doesn't make any sense for the business, right? Because the customer is not going to be happy. So that for to do that, the first thing you have to do is to lock the promised time that has been given to the customer. So if you see this here, so the moment the booking has been created and before the RSO picks in, right, what you can do is you can have a workflow or flow running behind the screen, behind the scene, once the booking is created and eventually you can just uh, populate the promised from and, uh, time and to time and date. And then uh, these are the different scheduling options that uh, RSO will use, right? So if you see there's a time range, resource time and resource plus time. So if I select time range, so RSO will try to, uh, will, will reschedule this uh, or optimize this booking only within this time promise time range, okay? So if I say somebody is gonna be at customer location between 9 to 11 a.m. on 26th of August, it will reschedule to other resource who is exactly available between this time, right? Who can reach within this time window. And that's why I choose time uh, range. If I want to use, uh, let's say, the, if I want to reuse the exact uh, current resource, right? And uh, then I use the resource if I don't want to change some other resource. But uh, if you want to change the resource and you want to only preserve the time, you can use the time range. If you want to do the both, you can use no resource plus time. And uh, in the RSO scope, which is, sorry, in the RSO goal, in the constraint, we need to make sure that uh, you select these two, the scheduling lock options and the scheduling windows. And uh, also make sure that this lock booking is given the highest priority because if, you, if it has the less priority or other objectives, uh, there are chances that uh, uh, the, the current technician who is holding this booking can be double booked to another booking as well, right? If there is any uh, time window available for other bookings to be created. Uh, that is something we have to keep in mind. And uh, the next rule I would suggest is, uh, next tip that I, I would like to give is, uh, if you have, you know, the RSO basically gives the flexibility for organizations, right, to achieve different business scenarios. So what does that mean? Uh, you can think about a scenario where, you know, organization uh, can have a scheduled job, like, you know, once in a, a scheduled run, once in a eight hours or once in a four hours, to pick the unscheduled work orders and schedule it to someone, right? And also it can have a, a emergency work orders where let's say for uh, any high priority customers or critical jobs, if the current technician couldn't, uh, for some reason, let's say he couldn't make it, it could be a personal emergency or it can be a, a, a vehicle breakdown, something like that. So we cannot wait for the next schedule of RSO to pick it up, right? So that's where we can have this separate RSO uh to focus specifically on that you know emergency jobs that is one thing second thing is uh, the next tip you'll see that uh, uh, um, on demand trigger but yeah to focus uh, to to have a separate uh, scope to focus only on that specific you know anomalies or uh, un unexpected events right so in that way you can segregate uh, the rso there are many use cases like this it's not uh, just you know like a normal or emergency you can have a uh, several rso's schedules based on your uh, business uh, area, like, you know, specific region or 
a specific organization unit or you know uh, something like that but the point key point to be noted here is since the scope uh, is based what you define in the resource requirement view if it is a new booking or in the booking view if it is going to be existing optimization just we saw the previous slide uh, based on what you get the data that you get the rso will consider those uh, will work on that level right so for example here if i make sure that you know my, if i enter that uh, I, i'm actually instructing here that pick the unscheduled work orders for the northeast region right uh, and then here i'm saying that uh, pick emergency work orders for the northeast region right so these are all different uh, schedules uh, different scopes and uh, just a continuation of the previous slide so in case of emergency right uh, as i said you cannot wait for the next schedule uh, of the rso to pick uh, to run and you know to start uh, assigning resources for those jobs we can have an on demand trigger of the rso itself so once you have the specific emergency work order something like uh, specific emergency schedules something like this think about it right you don't want your customers to be waiting uh, because your rso <coughs> run is like after seven hours right and that's where you can just uh, trigger on demand uh, trigger the rso on demand where you know it can be triggered using a flow or it can be triggered from the code because uh, it doesn't matter because microsoft exposes uh, action that can be called from either of these two and the key inputs for this action to be executed is the op optimization request type as to be two which is basically uh, similar to the run now uh, if you are using rso you know right you can do the run now uh, uh, to trigger a manual uh, had out uh, triggers the same thing we are doing it from the flow or code so there are certain limitations in the rso as well so for example if you remember the resource requirement we just saw now here you see the preferred organization unit right so uh, rso doesn't consider the rso doesn't support the preferred organization constraint at the moment so what we can do is you know let's say you have a specific organization unit to perform a specific set of wo uh, work where the resources under the organizer or or meant to be work on a specific region or meant to be work on a specific set of work which means based on the skill sets which just saw earlier so instead of using work, uh, since the rso doesn't support so what we can do is uh, when the work preferred organization is added we can have a flow uh, behind the scene or code you know to basically get all the resources under the preferred uh, organization and you can you know uh, make sure that you add those resources to directly to your uh, uh, preference and you know you can have it as a must choose from and in this case what we are saying is we are instructing rso to use only the resources uh, from this specific uh, pool you know or to to schedule for this job something like that and also the crew is not supported for rso at the moment so what uh, and a workaround for that could be you know we can have a crew leader as a skill set you know you can have a crew leader over here as a skill set and we can and we assign the same skill set to the crew resources who is the crew leader itself and then you know during rso we can we make sure that uh, we assign the uh, work order to this crew leader and uh, you know and we can have a other flow or workflow behind the scene to basically uh find the crew members uh, or or the crew whom the leader is you know whom this person is leader of and then assign that to the you know uh, uh to the crew schedule it to the crew something like that yeah with that uh, we are moving into the next uh, thing it is schedule board which is a manual so i just want to give some analogy on this you know from the recent uh, famous web series uh, loki so you can see uh, rso is kind of you know like uh, auto scheduling right so you have your uh, TVA association where you know it keeps monitoring the make sure that there's no much time branching right so similar stuff you have your RSO to make sure you have scheduled it and you know your jobs are scheduled properly in in frequent interval to the right resources you know and then if there is any uh, anomalies uh, you know where there will be a manual intervention needed and that's where you know the <laughs> TV agent or your scheduler jumps in and you know will try to uh, schedule the job to the right resource. uh and also for simple scheduling we don't need uh, rso right it's it's a uh, heavy uh for that so we can use a schedule board scheduling assistant in this case so which we going to jump into shortly so with that so we have schedule board tips so schedule board uh, is pretty much you know uh, uh it is it's, it's uh, most of us have been using schedule board and it's, it's pretty much uh, you are familiar with that uh there's only one tip i have uh, which is uh, quite good so i i got uh, to know it from uh, a fellow mvp scott lafant uh, from his blog so what we can do is right so we have time off request right the many scenarios if you see the out of box schedule board how it works is 
if you apply time of request it will just uh, gray out in the uh, you know schedule board it will just show it like this right let me see if i have any time of apply to any resource yeah uh, so you can see i have been you know apply time off for this resource so you can see it's grayed out here right uh, what happens is right in, in a typical scenario uh, when you have a scheduler working on multiple things he instead of just seeing is a gray uh, blanked out uh, uh, you know like this he definitely is much better to exactly show the scheduler what kind of time off it is right there can be different time off right can be a, a personal uh, time off can be uh, you know like uh, um, a training can be uh, you know emergency or long leave whatever it is right and we can it, it provides the flexibility to the uh, scheduler to see in a different color with you no know, appropriate details you know something like this right you can see uh, this resources like uh, uh, and pay time off from this date to this date right so to do this basically there's a the, this block covers in detail but you know just high level so you basically enable scheduling for time of request entity and then uh, you set up the booking meta metadata to show this information and then you can have a separate booking status to denote the as a like you no know, as a time off something like that so that it is shown in the schedule board and you can play around the colors of the booking status so that you can show it in the different colors right and uh, we update the booking set, the schedule board settings with the booking template to show it in this information and it's booking metadata is to we have a bunch of uh, options to basically you know to see whether you want a requirements to be created or not something like that and finally mm -hmm. our approach to link the booking to the time of request via our workflow or flow so that it is uh, easily we can associate what as bookings are associated, associated to the particular time of something like that right and yeah so uh, that's the only uh, tip i have for schedule board there's one more tip but i didn't have any screens uh, here to be honest i haven't tried it in the new schedule board but from the old schedule board so what can we as if you have a canvas app and you know you know like we cannot multi select the items and move it together right there is no bulk scheduling in the schedule board so what we can do is we can have a canvas app basically just you know uh, just will have from from date and to date and you know resources something like that and then uh, you can just use the url of the canvas app and you can render it here in the html so basically it it, it it will have the canvas app here and you can have you know from date and to date and select the resource and you can basically you know like move booking you can choose a target date and you can do move booking right so what happens is in that case uh, whatever the bookings that the resources has in that particular time uh, window it will be moved to the target time date so basically it works behind the scene with the entity booking entity itself uh, you know uh, using a flow it's just a kind of hack you know where you're giving a user a provision to uh, do a multi booking okay i don't have uh, screens for that now unfortunately but yeah that is another tip that i can think of uh, on the feet right now so since we are doing out of time i just want to cover two things so one is on the self service scheduling uh, there are two uh, okay first why we need a self service scheduling right so as we saw that you no know, schedulers we are uh, give uh, leverage uh, are using schedule board a scheduling assistant you know to extensively to do the scheduling so apart from that uh, we also uh, can give a provision to schedule to the external users like right? you know customers and vendors so why we need to do this is because you know it reduces the customer uh, it's it provides a better customer experience and reduces the operation cost because imagine that you know it, it saves lots of operation instead of customer calling you the support team and then support team coordinating with the uh, schedulers and then you no know, creating or, or moving the bookings in this case we are giving the privilege to the customer itself to do that of course we need to have a certain level of governance over that we can't just have the uh, customer you know to keep uh, play around with that uh, we definitely based on the business requirements we can have a different set of business uh, governance and approval process to do that but this definitely saves lots of time right it's a preview feature and the prerequisite for this is you to have a field service this version and the portals and uh, this solution uh, when you install the portal it comes with the uh, uh, you know a couple of flows and which you need this exchange account and email account to be created and sent to the customer right so if i go back uh, to my environment you can see that uh, this is my portal so the prerequisite or, or how do you set up is right once you install the portal i mean a field service portal you need to go here in the uh, portal settings over here and we basically en uh, enable that feature by come here right self service scheduling and then there's a different options where you can say uh, at what point of time you want to trigger a message or notifications to the customer uh, th these are different events you can use and you can see what are the different communication type we are using 
to send uh, you know the updates to the customer and then these are the flows that is been used to basically send the uh, you know uh, communication right and also you can see that uh, you can set the minimum time and maximum lead time so for example if you set 1 to 30 so we are giving a provision to customer to you know basically choose any resources from today to 30 days maximum something like that unfortunately recently it's, i don't know why suddenly it's throwing some issue i couldn't show the slots but uh, it basically shows the available slots and you can just you know uh, it's going to show something like this right if you select the slot it will have a time window here and then you can choose the uh, incident type that you have configured and you can choose additional information and book it it will automatically creates a, uh, you know a work order with the booking uh, and then it finds the resources behind the scene by using the self scheduling i mean service scheduling api and then you know it books the resources yeah if i go back to the uh, solution so these are the flows you know that comes with the solution and there are uh, you can see if you open the flow it's, it's pretty straightforward it basically gets the uh, notification that's created and sent to the customer okay so if i go back here and there is something that i want to show as well so if i go to the incident type right so i can define here which incident type can i allow the users to choose right so incident type is basically if you're new to incident type it's basically a template where you can define your service and product and service task uh, and you know you can use it in your work order right so you can see that uh, this this is for this if you provide this option enable for c2 it it makes sure that it shows the uh, incident type here for the customer to pick it up and you know and choose the right incident type so when your work order is created eventually the work order is created by the customer and you know against that uh, incident type okay so that is pretty much about the uh, uh, portals it's, it's pretty easy to spin it up and set up and run so the last one is as i just told you that you know there is a service scheduling api uh, which can be used which is used by the portal same api we can also use from our ex um, and our own systems you know in an organization so the main api that uh, i'm going to just uh, uh, talk about today is uh, the search availability api but there are other apis as well okay so if you take about a, a scenario that is explained here you know a typical process you will have a field service you have a schedule board used by the dispatcher a scheduler and then you have the technician who is using the field service mobile app and resco app uh, just a note if you're using resco app please make sure that you migrate to your field service mobile app because the resco app support will be stopped from next uh, june 2022 okay and you have rso which we saw now and you can have a you know, typical scenario you have you can have a customer portal uh, some other portal instead of field service portal let's say and some of the internal system which can be you know typically talks via middleware to your uh, you know to the api and and you no know, get the jobs assigned so definitely the, for the api there are certain inputs constraints need to be prepared and the api re returns a set of input constraints and there will be certain uh, you know post processing needs to be done uh, you know to on the result sets and can be given to the customer portal right so just a quick uh, to show quickly how the field service portal looks so there is a nice blog let me share that later so what you can do is you, know, you can see here i have the javascript here right so uh, it's just hardcore javascript and you can see i'm using this action you know, resource available action and you can see it accepts the constraint like resource requirement setting and resource specifications basically whatever in the uh, uh, work order and the resource requirement it will accept them as an input and you know it will return the available resources right you can see uh, the resources who are available resources who are on break and resources who are on having a, on leave you know and what are the names something like that so with this results you can do your post processing you can massage the data and then return and build something you know very similar to this uh, and and enable the uh, skill scheduling from the external systems as well uh, that's all uh, today for today and we have seen uh, the different scenarios and tips please uh, feel free to drop your questions if you have any in the chat and i'll try to answer them or you can also feel free to reach out to my social media and i'll try to help you out thank you so much for everyone for joining today and thank you so much DynamicsCon for giving me the opportunity and i sincerely thank all the organizers and the sponsors and the, all uh, the hard working that's been in put uh, to uh, pull up such a massive event. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions in the chat. Uh, I see some of them. Uh, let me start answering to them. Uh, and I appreciate if you have more questions, please uh, put it in the chat and I'll try to address them as much as possible.
So the first question has, um, is RSO available only for field service or is it available for any other first party app from Ankit? Hey Ankit, yeah, so the RSO is basically works on any uh, environment that has unified resource scheduling. So unified resource scheduling, uh, uh, when you have field service or project service or customer service, any one of this, you will be having unified resource scheduling, right? So if you have them, if you have unified resource scheduling, you can have RSO as an um, add-on to that. So if you are a partner or a customer, so you basically reach out to your Microsoft counterpart and to request a, a free trial uh, no, uh, to play around and then uh, you buy for yourself. Yeah. And the next question is from Anand. Hey, Anand. Uh, can RSO be targeted to a specific group of people or a specific person? Yes. So um, in the RSO, uh, in the RSO scope, you can uh, set uh, the specific resources based on basically you create a view uh, in your uh, app and then you feed that view to the RSO scope so that your scope can be targeted to a specific resources. So you can have uh, filters in your view, which will be uh, targeting on the specific uh, group of people for a specific EFE or field engineer or technician. Uh, you can also run it from the schedule board itself. So from the schedule board, you have an option to uh, run the RSO on a specific technician. Hope that uh, answers your question. And uh, next question is from Raghu Narayan. So is self-service scheduling available only for field service portal? Yes. So currently self-service scheduling is available only for the field service portal. So uh, also please uh, make note that you can have only one field service portal per environment. So if you have already have a field service, you can enable it from the your maker portal and uh, you can install it and then you can uh, configure the uh, setup as I just showed in the demo. Can you please share some useful? Yeah, okay. Let, let me quickly share that uh, in the chat. I have a few more questions. I'll, let me finish it and chat, drop in the chat. Back when FSA, or oh, this from uh, Tara Sinclair. So back when field service automation was originally called out, there was a preferred resource field on the account to identify it. Yes, since that has been duplicated, is there a way to identify that preferred resource field for a customer to assist to the scheduler? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure to be honest on that. Like uh, for a specific uh, customer, how do you uh, set up your uh, preferred or your, the, the resources that you do not want to schedule. Let me check on that and come back to this uh, window shortly. Yeah. Apologies for that. Oh, there's a bad echo. Oh my bad. Sorry about that. Ah, gosh. Let me see. No, I don't have a two. Okay. How is it now? Is it better now? Okay, so you're from the other side. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is there any other question? No, right? Okay. Hope I addressed all the questions. Let me quickly share the uh, information about the API uh, that Mr. Raghu asked for. And hope this is helpful. Yeah. I just dropped the information about the... Uh, Resource scheduling API, uh, you can check it here. So I have on call resources. So each week, the availability for the weekend works with just many different resources. Yes. So as this weekend, resource A is on call paper. So that P should show as available this weekend. Next weekend, it's a different resource. This is going to be longer data driven development. Yeah, so for Shasha, uh, Herman, so you can have, you can enable uh, entities that can be scheduled. Uh, you can also have custom entities to uh, enable for scheduling. And uh, once you have that, you'll have resource requirement created uh, behind the scene once for the, for the custom entity. So once you have the custom entity and you, uh, uh, and you enable it for uh, scheduling, you can schedule it from the schedule board as well. And to, to come back to uh, Tara's question on having different resources and standby on different uh, weekend. Yes, so you need to actually configure the uh, work hours of the resources. So uh, if, if the resources are going to be uh, 
uh, you know, like working in different resources on a different weekend. So you need to have the workers uh, 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 configured accordingly so that those resources will be used in for the scheduling. Or uh, you can also play around with uh, uh, some you know, custom rules or workflows where you can create the time of request uh, based on certain business rules automatically so that uh, you will just you know either you configure the wor uh, work hours manually or you can play around with the work hours or time of request through a workflow. And so that only you can make sure that certain group of people is available on certain period of time or weekend or you no know, after the shift, uh, night shift, something like that. And then you can have another set of resources available on the another period, something like that. Hope that's helpful, that answers your question. And we got three more minutes. Thank you, welcome, most welcome. Let me also drop my, yeah, you can you can check the speaker information and you can reach out to my LinkedIn or Twitter if you have uh, any queries or questions, uh, I will be able to help you. Thank you. Hi, Molly, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. If there is no more questions, yeah, I think uh, we can. We have like two more minutes, I believe. <clears throat> Please check my blog post also that I shared uh, earlier, uh, where I have listed out some of the uh, best practices to use uh, RSO. So, because RSO is, is, if it is used effectively, it can be very helpful and it can save lots of your uh, truck roads and it's direct you know like uh, cost uh, and it directly reduces lots of your costs of uh, in operation cost basically if you use it effectively yeah. thank you adam thanks Hey, thank you, Raghu. Okay, so with that, uh, ah, thank you, Gabriel. Yeah, please feel free to reach out to my uh, social media, in, reach out to me in social media and in, in uh, Twitter or LinkedIn uh, if you have any more queries and I'll be able to help you out. And please enjoy the rest of the sessions and we got lots of awesome sessions coming up, uh, lined up next. And yeah, have fun, uh, stay safe, have a nice rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you everyone.